So when Michael said, would you speak at the, uh, the gun show, I said, what do you want me to speak on? He said, whatever. And I said, well, let me, let me see if I can fit it into the larger mission that I'm on. And that is, I want to take back our state from the insanity of the far left, that it has ruined everything about gun. And I, I absolutely believe that um, our Second Amendment community needs to be far more active and far more strategic in how we demand change in California. Um, we've got some great organizations, San Diego County gun owners being at the, the top of the list, in my opinion, in terms of groups that are really doing effective work, real work, um, actually uh, providing the biggest bang for the buck in terms of the supporters that give them uh, resources. But we need, we need to really completely change our approach to fighting. And so I think there are three things that we need to do differently. First is about the message. Second is about the messengers. And third is to take the fight into the street uh, by going on the offense. Because right now we are on the defense. I don't think we have a good message. And we don't really have a lot of messengers because a lot of people who say that they support the Second Amendment, I'm talking about the politicians, okay. are cowards. They tell us, yes, we're for the Second Amendment. Let me fill out your survey. I mean, some of our Second Amendment groups ask politicians, would you be okay if we got our endorsement? Endorse them. Out them. You know, expose the fact that they're a Second Amendment supporter. Can't tell based on their actions. Uh, it shouldn't be a secret. People should know whether you are for the Second Amendment, not because CRPA or San Diego County gun owners endorses you. They should know you for the Second Amendment because you have been loud and proud and active on the issue. So let me start out first with a message. It's not enough to say we are for the Second Amendment right to bear arms. That's not enough. We're not going to win more than 30%, 35%. We're going to get our own base. and They're going to say, yeah, we get it. We get it. We need to expand our message so that people really can connect the dots. People who do not understand the Second Amendment are not on our side. Because it's not like we teach the Constitution in, in school anymore. No, they're too busy teaching personal pronouns and you know, you know, what gender you could choose, rather than, here's how our government works. Here's the, the crazy concept that the Founding Fathers came up with, that we are born with inalienable rights, that your government doesn't give you rights like the Magna Carta. You're, you're born with these rights. And our system of government, they say, would turn things upside down from the Magna Carta. We actually put it right side up. Our system of government says you are presumed to have freedom, except the very specific, very limited things that we've delegated as a people to our government. Anything we didn't specifically delegate, you can't do. Revolutionary. And... So the first thing we have to do is go out and explain the Second Amendment right to bear arms so that people understand what it's about. I like talking about the Second Amendment as not the right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is the human right of self-defense. We need to describe it that way. Your Second Amendment right is your human right of self-defense. And when we expand the concept to, should every human being have a right of self-defense? We'll be like, of course, you know, it's, it's obvious. Well, if you're gonna have a right of self-defense, you're gonna use a, 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 a plastic spoon, uh, or are you going to have some other tools that you have a right to be able to utilize? We've gotta get in the game of civics and explain the Second Amendment from a different point of view. It's not about guns, it's about the human right of self-defense. And our weapon is an extension of that right. The weapon is the currency by which we exercise the right. We have to do a better job of explaining the, the human right of self-defense. Another part of the communication is that we have got to start becoming um, an organization, a movement dedicated to combating crime and violence and lawlessness. Again, if you have a right of self-defense, it presumes that there's an attacker. It presumes that there's an evildoer. It presumes that there's someone who is using violence against you. 
in a manner that's not sanctioned and not appropriate. That's what we also call crime. And so our movement cannot just be about, well, we have a right of the Second Amendment. Our movement must be about, we are here to protect people. We are here to save lives. We are here to, to combat crime. And that is why you need people who are law-abiding, who are courageous, who have the right tool, and can be the heroes. That's why when we talk about concealed carry, we need to talk about the best way to stop a deranged lunatic hell-bent on inflicting the most carnage and damage and, and, and uh, uh, loss of life is to have a hero properly armed who can take that lunatic down. There's a reason why these mass shooters don't target police substations. They know they won't get very far. They go after our schools. They go after our churches. They go after our movie theaters because they know there are no heroes there that are able to have a tool, a weapon, to take them down easily. And so we need to start making our movement about protecting lives, stopping violence, taking down criminals, we represent law-abiding heroes. They are the ones that are empowering law-breaking criminals. I mean, let's review the bidding in California. I mean, criminals have more rights than law-abiding citizens in the state of California. It looks like the, the left does everything they can. They bend over backwards to enable, to explain away, to excuse lawlessness. But if you are a law-abiding citizen, there's something dangerous about you whether you're a parent in the school districts or if you are someone who believes in the Second Amendment, inherently you're dangerous. Inherently, you need to be watched. You need to have a safe in your home. And if you don't follow our rules and regulations, and they become so complex that, gosh, you know, I'm pretty good at keeping up on, on any Second Amendment-related restrictions in California. But Michael has a test that you did a couple years ago, right? You, you wrote up the test, and most people fail the test of, you know, are you a criminal? Uh, are you a law-abiding uh, gun owner based upon these, what was it, 20 questions, 10 questions? And some of the most experienced gun owners fail the test. They want you to be a criminal. But in their book, they want you to violate the regulations so they can take away your right of self-defense. And so in our movement, we need to do a better job on the message to talk about constitutional rationale behind our Second Amendment, as well as the fact that we are the ones fighting crime. We are the ones saving lives. We also need to truth tell the, truth tell the other side. The Giffords organization, Gavin Newsom, Bonta, what's the other, uh, any town? Uh, every town. Every town. I'm just not going to sugarcoat it. These people are liars. They're paid to lie. They make shit up. Their data is bunk. It's manufactured. And I know that Michael's working on a very important initiative to deep dive on the data and to expose the fact that they've literally lied to the American people. They've made up you know, statements that California's gun laws work. Well, the actual data shows they don't work. And so in addition to us having a message on crime and freedom, we have to tear them down as liars. And so why are you lying? If you're all about improving safety, why are you lying about the effectiveness of your so-called uh, gun control laws? The second is, we can have the best message in the world, but if we don't have messengers to convey that, then it's not going to get out. It's not going to be spread. And our best messengers should be our, our elected officials. They're the ones that can get easy media. They're the ones that are sitting up there on the, the city council dais. They're the ones that are going to Sacramento or to Congress. But every time I turn on the TV, there's a left-wing Democrat hooting and hollering about gun control. I'm not hearing a whole lot, with rare exception, from so-called Republicans, so-called conservatives. Because they want to navigate and they want to be you know, safe about what they're talking about. You either stand for principle or you don't. And if you stand on a principle and you think something is wrong, then you ought not to be silent about it. You ought to be very vocal. Anytime there's a mass shooting, you see the Democrats falling all over themselves. 
to deal with, uh, to get to the media and, and start saying we need to do this, that, the other thing. So anytime that there is a tragedy, our side needs to be out with our own talking points, with our own proposals, equally as, as animated as the other side. I'm sick and tired of seeing people get elected saying they support freedom, and then they're silent. I don't think we ought to give them an endorsement. I don't think we ought to support them in their primaries. I don't think we ought to give them the contribution. Constantly and still doing that. San Diego County gun owners has been very effective and principled about standing up. Unlike other Second Amendment organizations in the state, which basically are a cheap date. They'll go along to get along. San Diego County gun owners had an issue in the last election with the Republican Party of San Diego's choice for sheriff. Someone who not only was fundamentally dishonest about their positions, but who backed um, very radical gun control laws. And everyone said, well, you know, the Republican Party endorses, we should get, get in line. No, that's probably a reason why you should take a second look at that candidate anytime the Republican establishment gets behind someone. San Diego County gun owners had been a valued partner of the San Diego Republican Party for many years. But I witnessed it up front, how disgraceful the treatment was towards the San Diego County gun owners, as though you have no right to weigh in on this endorsement. I'm sorry, but you, you call yourselves the party of freedom? And this is a pretty important freedom, and you want to hear no criticism? You don't want to hear no input? Michael simply asked to slow the process down. And they denied that open, transparent, deliberate process. So I'm sick and tired of saying, oh, I guess we're just going to have to go along. No. If a Republican or conservative who says they're good on the Second Amendment remains silent, we need to recruit someone else to take that seat who's going to be a leader and who's going to be vocal about it. No more free ride. Uh, third, we have to take the battle into the streets. We have to have a proactive agenda that is all about empowering people to safeguard their home, their family, using their Second Amendment rights of self-defense. And that's why I want to see legislative proposals introduced at city councils. I want to see legislative proposals introduced in Sacramento. Oh, sure, we're going to get voted down. But call the question. Force them to cast the vote. Well, force them to argue against the proposal. Every time you introduce a proposal, even if it's controversial, it stimulates debate and people start hearing different points of view and they may reconsider where they are on the issue. I also think we ought to put initiatives on the ballot. It's hard, you have to collect signatures, but I think that you ought to start at the local level, maybe have in a city, if the city council won't put an initiative on the ballot, collect signatures in the city. If the county won't put a proposal on the ballot, collect signatures in the county. And it could be, again, a wide range of policies that we could pursue. Uh, one of the things that you could do is force the city council to vote on these honorary resolutions, you know, sense of the city of San Diego says, what should we do about global warming? What the hell are you doing about global warming? But they do, a, they, they'll do a resolution. They'll do a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Okay, so how about we do a resolution saying that we believe that constitutional carry in California, which the Supreme Court has already been in, just crystal clear in its guidance, that legislators that vote to uh, infringe on our rights and if their legislation is overturned, that they should be ineligible to run for re-election. For one second. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm done with seeing a politician knowingly pass a law that the Supreme Court has already deemed to be don't call it just unconstitutional. Illegal. It is an infringement on freedoms. You have violated our freedoms. The ACLU is always out there suing at a drop of a hat when freedoms have been inviolated. Violated. They, they get their lawyers' fees. And of course, politicians are condemned for, oh, I can't believe you did it. You violated that person's civil rights. You're violating our constitutional rights of self-defense. And you're doing it wantonly in violation of a crystal clear U.S. Supreme Court. And so I, I, let's put it on the ballot. Oh, they're going to say oh, it's unconstitutional and you can't do this. Well, let's have a debate because it draws attention to the fact that they are intentionally passing laws 
that for a period of time, because it takes 18 months, 24 months to get to the Supreme Court and finally get a, a resolution in our favor, which we know we're going to get, but you, in the interim, de deprived people of their constitutional rights, and by taking that action, you've chilled people's willingness to exercise those rights. Because they think, well, there's this law, it is being challenged, it's in, there's an injunction, but if I do this, this, and this, I won't, it, it, maybe it's going to be something that's going to be upheld and then I'm going to be penalized. They do that because they're trying to bully you. That's what our founding fathers were fearful of. Your government bullying you. And so I think we ought to look for these initiatives, these policies that we can get behind. And there's a whole range of them. The Democrats, the liberals, always have another idea on gun control. It's a flavor of the month. It's like a playing card deck. My goal in Sacramento is to introduce a bill. I think this is it's part of the conversation. Anytime there's a mass shooting, I want to mandate the release of a toxicology report on the shooter. I want to know what drugs they're on, both pharmaceutical and illegal. Because, you know, in California, we are very permissive on drugs. And I bet you any money that a lot of these uh, deranged lunatics have a substance abuse problem. So let's shift the, the, the focus and the conversation back to that. Of course, the Democrats would say, well, no, no, that violates people's medical freedoms. Their privacy rights. Hold on, you have shown that you don't give a rat's rear end about people's freedoms or rights. And if you commit a crime, there's this quaint little notion that you actually don't have rights after that point. So we want to see a toxicology report. And I want to see it published on the internet within 24 hours of the suspect being detained. Because you don't need long to take a, a draw of blood and to do their analysis. Again, I want to inundate them with our points of view and our philosophy by proposing things specifically at every turn. Um, that's all on the Second Amendment. I want to close on this. In my race for state assembly, how many of you live in the 75th? Uh, Lakeside, East County? You've seen the crap that they've shoved in your mailbox, right? $1.4 million has been spent by the Sacramento Swamp. I call them the Sacramento Swamp. And by the way, they're not just California Democrats and left-wing groups. Some of these are very influential uh, Republican groups, so-called Republican groups, who always give money to the Democrats, and they, they accept their lot in life like a good Stockholm Syndrome you know, contaminated uh, uh, hostage. Um, they accept their lot in life to basically shut up and sit down and maybe get some crumbs every once in a while. Meanwhile, our state suffers. Meanwhile, we don't have a voice because they're not speaking up. And so 44% of 40 million people feel like there's nobody fighting for them. I wear it as a badge of honor that we have $1.4 million being diverted from target seats in California for some of the people I've endorsed to try to flip seats uh, to spread lies in my district because I don't think the lies are going to work. I think people know me in this district. They can easily find the facts. We have a website called carlfacts.com that people can go to. Um, but, I mean, this is insane. I get calls from people saying, I got a mail review with AOC and Elon Omar, and it says Carl DeMaio joins the squad. <laughs> Do these people actually think this is going to work? And so we actually got a copy of Andrew Hayes' poll, paid for by the Democrats. And I say shame on any Republican that supports this guy at this point. Okay, you are literally dumb as dirt at this point if you're still supporting this guy. The poll had 18 hits. Carl DeMaio supports tax increases. Okay. You have a better shot of convincing someone I'm straight, okay, than me supporting tax increases. Goes down the whole list. And it illustrates the problem of the brokenness of our political system. It used to be that people would do polls to find out what you wanted. What is your opinion on this? I wonder what the voters actually want. Not anymore. They're doing polls to figure out what lie can they sell you. What would you actually fall for? That's now the new approach to polling, both on the Republican side and the Democrat side. And so... I see this election when we win on Tuesday as a repudiation of those tactics 
I think we're in a whole new ball game. That's why when people say, why are you staying and fighting? And I am more confident than ever that we're going to get our state back. The problem is that our Republican Party is not fighting to get those votes. We see people migrating away from Democrats just because of the epic failures that they produce. Latinos are at the top of that list. They are running for the exits. But the problem is that we haven't given them a destination. You cannot change this state if you don't first fix the Republican Party of California and force it to actually have courage and stand on principle and, and have some sort of ability to fight again. So I'm going to need your help in the next, what, 48 hours, I guess? 48 hours and, yeah, 48 hours and four hours, uh, 52 hours. I need you to tell all your friends, disregard the mailers and the attack ads. You know Carl, stick with him. You don't like what you, you get after two years, you can throw them out. But we have an opportunity to take back our state. It first starts with taking back the conservative movement, taking back our Republican Party. You don't have to be a Republican, but you should want to see the Republican Party at least be an opposition party. Um, and if we do that, I believe that the Second Amendment will receive great benefit. Our movement, our freedoms will be uh, protected much better in a, in, a, in a state that has two functioning parties once again. With that, questions, comments? Yes, sir. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate your message. Given the fact that you gave us this message at a time show, that not only can you not buy a gun, you can even talk twice. If that's what we're at today, if constitutional carry is the goal, what's the first concrete win that we can expect, at least second level? Well, I think we're doing a better job of the, the lawfare, filing the lawsuits, but it's like playing whack-a-mole. You know, the Supreme Court gets 3,000 cases a year. Did you know that? They get 3,000 cases and they only take about 120 to 150, depending upon the complexity. At some point, these SOBs are going to get by with an unconstitutional law. And then it won't be 18 months. It'll be five years or 10 years before the Supreme Court says, well, let me go back and revisit that. And then all those other laws that are like it, the son of Sam, the cousin Nancy, boom, 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 they all get taken down. But for five to 10 years, we live without our freedoms in an, un in an unjust manner. So the lawfare... A lot of Second Amendment organizations are doing that because, frankly, several of the organizations are run by lawyers who get paid. Again, I'm, I'm appreciative of the fact that they're doing the work that they're doing. Don't get me wrong. This has got to be taking a battle into the streets. This has to be flipping seats. It has to be taking out city council members. It has to be taking over the Republican Party of San Diego and booting those assholes out. Sorry. It's got to be, it's got to be taking and, and flipping seats in, in, in Sacramento. Um, Politicians don't care about your letters, they don't care about your emails, they don't care about your phone calls. The only language they speak is when one of them loses their job. That is the only language I'm interested in speaking, is when one of them loses their job. And that's why our voter guide is so, at Reform California, I know that, that San Diego County, County Gun, Gun Orders has their voter guide. Our voter guide is so focused on recruiting people to challenge, to take out those establishment polls. We've endorsed against establishment incumbent Republicans. People always come to me, well, are you worried about losing the seat? No, I already got a Democrat in that seat. Oh, he says he's a Republican, but he's really a Democrat. I would rather make sure that all you others know that when this person loses their seat, you may be next. I use the analogy of a loaded gun. If you discharge all the bullets, you no longer have any leverage. I don't need to take out every Democrat in Sacramento. I don't need to take out every Republican who's a wish, a squish. I need to take one out, and that will be the language that we speak to these others. And so on the Second Amendment, I absolutely think that in some of these Democrat-Democrat races, there are, there are about, correct me if I'm wrong, about half a dozen Democrat-Democrat races right now throughout the state of California. And look, you're going to be stuck with a Democrat anyways, choice between the home or being shot. But if gun owners in that district said, you know, we don't like all these other policies that you have, but on the issue of Second Amendment, you are better than the other one. And our votes are going to swing and cause that race to go to the other side. You'd have Democrats sit there saying, oh, wait a minute. 
You mean if I anger the Second Amendment freedom lovers that I actually may be in a Democrat Democrat race at some point? So you don't have to necessarily get every seat. You need to get one or two every cycle, and everyone knows it's because of the Second Amendment. In La Mesa, Laura Lothian, I don't think she would have won. I know she would have won the second time around with 11 votes. Her margin was 11 votes without the San Diego County gun owners. And that one seat stopped not one but two pieces of bad legislation so far on the Second Amendment in La Mesa. Yes, sir. Let's talk about suicides. Right. You know, uh, banning high capacity magazines certainly will reduce the number of suicides, right? Sorry, missed on this first one. Better, better get 10 more or 12 more uh, opportunities. Again, some of us need to explain how guns work to, to, to the general public. Um, I did this on the radio show when I would say, you know, what's the definition of a, uh, a, a, an assault uh, weapon? And people would say, well, I don't know. Right. There is no definition. It's, according to the Democrats, something that looks scary. That's the def A handgun fits their definition of an assault weapon. And so most people don't understand that. They hear a term and they're like, oh, or we have to reduce the number of gun fatalities each year. Well, look at the massive percentage that are suicide. You want to reduce violence in society. Let's deal with the mental health crisis and why people are turning to suicide. So again, we don't have Republicans out there. I don't even think some of the Republicans know about this definition of assault weapon. I've asked them, and they're like, uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's some legal definition. Like, no, there is no definition of an assault weapon. It is a political creation of the left and the media. Even, even the concept of mass shooting, I say, well, what's a mass shooting? Uh, a dozen? Half a dozen? These are Republican elected officials who've been in office multiple terms don't know anything about this topic, that's why they're so quiet. So I think you're absolutely right. It's, we have to reframe the issue, but we also have to educate people on the basic reality of what's really going on here. And that starts with our elected officials so that they can be the spokespeople to educate the public. Because they get the microphone. Now, nah, right here is the new media. I, I, every day someone unsubscribes from the Union Tribune and the angel gets its wings. Um, <laughs> NBC, CBS, ABC, the whole lot, the whole rotten lot are a fraction of viewership now. This is where, this is empowering. We are so close to actually being a force in California. The one thing that, that Newsom and the media are hoping that you don't realize is that if we actually activate and stop just saying, well, we're going to go to gun prom once a year and I'm going to be a tin ringer and I'm going to, you know, maybe go to a social once, once a month. Good, do that if it fulfills you and it helps Michael. But could you, could you walk one neighborhood and knock on 10 doors? Because if you're not willing to do that, you're not actually moving the needle. Stop sign waving. You're only reminding the left that there's an election going on. Quietly go to Republicans. Well, one real quick example of how close we are to rebalancing the state. You don't think it's possible. You're like, oh, California is already in the tank. In the last election, well, let me start in 2018. In 2018, Gavin Newsom won the governorship 62 to 38. That's a landslide. Who ran against him in 2018? You know the guy's name? John Cox. Oh, yeah. He traveled the state on my bus on the gas tax repeal tour. 
but he actually ran a campaign. Okay, he tried his best. 2022, who was the candidate for governor? Do you remember? Oh. No. <laughs> his name was Brian Dolly. He ran such a wonderful campaign. All of you remember him, of course. The numbers shifted naturally with no campaign being run. He's, he literally hid in a closet in Northern California. 6% shift. It, the numbers went from 62% for Newsom to just 56%. We went from 38% up to 44%. That's a six point swing naturally because people were like, yeah, I gotta go with anyone but Gavin. But let me rub some salt in the wound. Between 2018 and 2022, that same election period, 1.4 million Republicans and conservative independents fled the state. Had they stayed and voted, the governor's race would have been right down the middle, 50-50. Oh, let me give you some more things to think about. Had every voter who voted for President Trump in 2020 in California, Trump got, you know, you know completely lambasted. It was like 62-38, I think, in the 2020 uh, presidential election. Had everyone who voted for Trump in 2020, who still lives here, by the way, not the ones that fled, but people who still live here, had they cast a ballot for a Republican governor? We would have Governor Brian Dolly today by 53 to 47%. Can you imagine? And by the way, we would have broken the, the Democrat supermajority in both the state Senate and the state assembly. You're saying those guys who voted for Trump and support No, they stayed home. They didn't feel they were powerful. They gave up hope. And you know what? Newsom and the media want you to feel that you're hopeless, that you're powerless. But you know, if you actually use this, and use this and drag five voters that were not expected to show up in the election, you will flip seats they never saw coming. And that's with their stupid ballot harvesting and voter fraud. And so I need you all to understand that you are powerful. They want you not to realize your own power. Collectively, we are powerful if we all do the things that we need to do. When we went after La Mesa City Council, no one in San Diego thought we could win it. The party didn't do anything. The Lincoln Club, oh, don't even get me started on those yahoos. But I went to Michael, and Michael said, we're in. What can we do? He put money into Laura Lothian's campaign. Outside of Reform California, the single biggest donor, San Diego County gun owners. And every single week for four weeks, he showed up with a team of volunteers. And there were always different volunteers every, every, every weekend. And she won that election 51%. In a special election, they were shocked. And it was a 65% Democrat city. Do you know why we won 51%? Is that we pulled in a special election, our people out to the polls, and the Democrats took it for granted. That's power. We are more powerful than we recognize. They want us to continue to feel hopeless. In fact, the LA Times did an editorial a month ago. It was snarky. The headline was, you want to leave California? Fine, but shut your mouth on the way out. They want us to flee because then the state's theirs. They want us to be quiet about it, like the Republican legislators are in Sacramento. Just shush, shush. You can be here, but sit in the corner and don't say anything. We absolutely need to fire up our base and get them to see that they can exercise their power collectively, but they got to get off their couch and into the fight. And that's part of what we have to do in addition to the messaging. Any other questions? I see our Libertarian Party is here. Thank you, guys. Maybe you can get uh, some of your folks to show up at the Republican Party. Actually, the Republican Party doesn't even hold meetings anymore. Yeah, where are they? Uh, I think they're hiding somewhere. Uh, well, maybe at some point they may reappear. We don't know. Uh, as a percentage, that's, that's complicated. Yeah, it's a complicated question. A lot of people have gone independent because they don't want to be associated with the party. They're just too embarrassed. They're still conservative. In fact, it was so funny when, when I saw some mailers that went out in, in my race from the uh, so-called Republican endorsed candidate saying to independents, I'm going to work with both parties. I'm going to work with Democrats. And I started laughing. I was like, most of these independents in East County are more conservative than the registered Republicans. They do not like the Republican Party. And you're basically saying, send me to Sacramento to be part of the problem. I'm going to work collaboratively with in the Democrats. We don't need another Democrat up there. We got enough. We need someone different up there. So we've got a party problem in California. 
And so we've got to not hope that they're going to get their crap ironed out. We've got to, we've got to create the parade down the street because these politicians are good at one thing, getting in front of the parade that you all create. All right, we have to be the ones to make the movement happen at the grassroots level. Any last comments, questions? Yes, sir. Um, the gun owners have the voter guide. Yes. I was wondering, uh, do you still have something similar? Or should... it, our voter guides are very similar. I don't even know if there's any difference on most of them. I don't think there's any difference. SanDiegoElectionGuide.org is our voter guide. If people live in other parts of the state, we cover um, all the local races in, in uh, seven regions, but we also have a statewide guide. They can access all of our voter guides at electionguidecalifornia.org. Um, I was up in Riverside. It's not even in my district this morning for a barbecue event that we held uh, for the Riverside uh, voter guide that we, we unveiled. So um, share it across the state. We have, again, as I mentioned, uh, 52 hours left in this campaign to, to, get, to get the vote out. And if people show up in greater numbers on our side, there may be some races that are a surprise win for us on, on Tuesday night. Thank you so much, and thanks for supporting San Diego County Journal.